So I've thoroughly used and tested uh, all of the current Apple Watch models uh, from the SE2, yep, there it is, uh, to the Series 8 and also the Apple Watch Ultra. And in this video, I'm gonna be comparing all three of these models to help you find out which is best for you. So I've essentially broken this down into three main categories. First is the best value category, uh, and then there's the best overall category, and then finally is the my choice category. So let's go ahead and see which category belongs to which Apple Watch to help you find out which Apple Watch is right for you. As always, I will leave all the purchase links down in the description. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this uh, one by one and the first category is the best value category. And that goes to none other than the brand new Apple Watch SE2. Uh, this is Apple's latest entry level Apple Watch and comes in at $249 or 259 pounds. And this attractive price point makes it a really good value watch. Now, in terms of the design, uh, it is actually quite similar to the Series 8, featuring that same uh, iconic Apple Watch design with those rounded corners uh, and you also get a liquid retina OLED display which extends right out to the edges uh, and overall gives the watch a very modern look uh, that not only works good regardless of your gender uh, I think it also works really well uh, regardless of your outfit or occasion so whether it be more formal uh, or casual settings especially in this dark midnight color that I have here. But more importantly than that, the big reason why the SE2 gets my best value pick uh, is because it still carries and has all of those essential Apple Watch features. Now, if you've seen my other Apple Watch videos, you'll know that I'm a big fan of receiving uh, and responding to notifications right on my watch. I find it so useful uh, to get important notifications throughout the day on my watch so I could just quickly glance at my wrist to see them uh, without having to reach for my phone. And the SE2 does a great job at this. Uh, again, the display looks really great uh, and watchOS 9 features a lot of new features and ways to respond and interact with your notifications as well. And then when it comes to uh, activity and working out, the SE2 is well equipped as it has Apple's workout app, which means you have a lot of uh, pre-installed workouts allowing you to track your indoors or outdoor workouts and then review that data right on the watch uh, or at a later date on your iPhone. Uh, I find this is a really good way to track progress and see what kind of goals you are hitting uh, or not hitting, of course. Uh, and then at the same time, in the background, the SE2 will continuously monitor your heart rate, uh, including with the ability to uh, turn on high as well as low heart rate notifications to make sure your heart rate stays in check. And then on the subject uh, of safety features, the SE2 has two really important features. Uh, and the first is fall detection and the second is crash detection. Now, as the names imply, both of these features will detect if you're ever uh, in a severe fall or car crash, and then will prompt you on screen to respond. And then if you don't, uh, they will automatically call emergency services on your behalf. I've already read several articles of real world examples uh, where crash detection or fall detection for that matter actually save people's lives. So this is just a feature uh, that is reassuring to have on in the background. Another great feature of the Apple Watch uh, is Maps and the SE2 has this as well. Uh, I find getting turn-by-turn uh, -turn directions right on the wrist to be very useful, especially if say you are out walking uh, or biking, you don't have to pull out your phone, instead just glance at your wrist to see where to take that next turn. Although Siri may not be the best digital assistant, uh, I find for more simple tasks, Siri can be very useful. Uh, for example, asking to create a reminder or to see the weather outside or asking whether it's gonna be raining. Uh, and Siri on the SE2 is equally great as it is on any other Apple Watch. Uh, and again, it's just that added convenience of having it right on the wrist uh, that means I actually use it more throughout the day. So that just gives you a glance at just some of the features that the Apple Watch SE2 has to offer. Uh, there is much more but all of this goes to show that the SE2 offers that core Apple Watch experience, again, at a very attractive price. Uh, another great thing about the SE2 is the battery life. Uh, in fact, I find it to be just as good as the Series 8, lasting me a full day of use. Now, how you set up your watch does matter. I have done a more uh, thorough Apple Watch guide, which I'll leave linked in the description if you're curious to check that out. Uh, but for me, the SE2 lasts a full 18 hours where I end the day with around 20 to 20 25% remaining uh, and then put it on charge for around an hour or so uh, to have enough juice for the next day. 
And then what is especially uh, cool about the SE2 is it actually comes with the same processor as the Series 8, which is that new S8 chip. Uh, and compared to the SE1, this creates a noticeable difference uh, in terms of the performance. I find that loading uh, opening apps, for example, bigger apps like Mail, uh, Maps, is significantly faster on the SE2 uh, and really makes a big difference. Uh, and again, it's just really cool to know that for this entry-level watch, you still get that top-of-the-line processor that is also found in the high higher end series eight. So this is great uh, for, again, fast performance today, but also longevity as this is a new chip. Uh, the S8 was just announced with the SE2 and series eight, meaning it's going to get many years of software support. In fact, I would expect anywhere from five to around six years of software support. So this means this watch can last you for many years to come. And this is why for $249, the SE2 gets the best value category uh, and why I think this is actually the perfect Apple Watch if you are new to the Apple Watch. By the way, guys, if you are enjoying this video so far, a like on this video and a sub to the channel would be amazing. Okay, so the best value Apple Watch goes to the SE2, but the best overall Apple Watch goes to none other than the brand new Series 8. Now the Series 8 starts at $399 or 419 pounds, uh, and at this price, I think it is the best Apple Watch you can buy, not just compared to other Apple Watches, uh, but in the smartwatch industry as a whole. And this starts with the display. Now the display on the uh, Apple Watch Series 8 is actually 20% larger than on the SE2. Uh, and when you're talking about a display of this size, 20% goes a long way. Now, another great feature uh, is that the Series 8 achieves this not by being a larger uh, watch overall, but actually by having even thinner bezels going around the display. And this allows for a larger display in the same size Apple Watch uh, and with thinner bezels. So in my opinion, uh, the thinner the bezels, the better. It just makes the watch look even more modern uh, and that display even bigger uh, without making the watch any bulkier. And then uh, check this out, because the Series 8 has that larger display, uh, for the first time we now also get an on-screen keyboard. Now at first glance uh, this may look super small, uh, and it is, but with predictive text uh, it really manages to work quite well. You do have to get used to it a little bit, uh, but if you're responding say with a couple of words to a message, I find this to be very quick and useful, though if my response is any longer than just a couple of words I'll use the uh, dictation feature to respond to a message, uh, which by the way is also on the SE2, but again, not this on-screen keyboard that is exclusive to the Series 8. So overall, uh, the display on the Series 8 is really, really excellent uh, and great. I do only have one complaint, and this complaint actually also goes for the SE2, uh, and that is that these displays do scratch easily. Now, after just a month of regular day-to-day -day use, uh, wearing the watch every day, I already have a few hairline scratches, uh, particularly going around the upper edges of the display. And just after a couple months of use, I've said this before in my review as well, uh, to me, this is not acceptable. Acceptable. Now, these watches get very powerful processors and generally good hardware that can last for many years to come, but if after a couple of months already uh, my screen starts to show scratches, it makes me think, okay, how will this display look uh, one, two, three, perhaps even five years down the line? So my suggestion is to definitely get a screen protector. Uh, again, this is whether you have the Series 8 or the SE2. Uh, I'm afraid that both displays are quite prone to scratching, so I have done a uh, separate comparison video in which I compare the main types of screen protector options for the Apple Watch. Uh, so you can check that out. I'll leave that linked in the description uh, so you can find which screen protector will best match your use case. But aside from that, my experience has been great. Uh, and in fact, I would say my favorite feature of the Series 8, and I think is a really uh, good reason to actually upgrade from the SE to the Series 8 or consider getting the Series 8 over the SE is the always on display. Now, what this basically means is that you will always have your watch face showing on the display, uh, regardless of whether your watch is unlocked or not and this I think is great for two reasons uh, first I think it just looks better uh, to have the watch face showing at all times rather than a uh, black screen on your wrist and then secondly it also allows you to check the time in a more subtle way so say your arm is on the table uh, you can just glance at your watch to see the time uh, this is great by the way if you're ever in a boring meeting and you don't want to you know check the time like this you can just glance at your wrist to to catch it um, and secondly of course it is also better uh, because you don't have to move your wrist to wake up the display or, or tap the display to wake it, just glance down uh, at your wrist to read the time, just like you would with any other normal
normal watch. Now, this feature is something that actually matters more to me than I thought it would initially. So as someone who's used an Apple Watch for many years now, uh, going all the way back from the Series 3 to the current Series 8, I can tell you that for me, the always-on display alone is enough reason to pay that extra money uh, and go for the Series 8 instead. And then in terms of features, the Series 8 takes everything that the SE2 has, uh, but then also adds some additional heart uh, and health features. For example, you also have the ability to take an ECG right on the wrist. This is great for a great health feature. Uh, and then you can also measure your blood oxygen uh, and also adds a new temperature sensor. Now at the moment, this is primarily used for women's health applications uh, like cycle tracking. So the Series 8 overall really builds on uh, a lot of the health features that you find in the SE2, but then takes it even further. And then when it comes to the battery life, uh, the Series 8 performs similarly to the SE2, meaning it can last me all day, again, around 18 hours or so. Uh, the difference being though that the Series 8 does get extra fast charging. So it actually charges 33% faster than the SE2. Uh, the SE2 doesn't charge slow, uh, but that extra fast charging is really great, especially if you charge your watch in the morning whilst getting ready for the day, uh, like I do every day. And I already mentioned this uh, when looking at the SE2, but the Series 8 also gets that new S8 chip, and this chip is just as great on the Series 8. Again, day-to-day -day tasks are gonna be super fluid uh, and smooth, and this really is a noticeable difference when compared to previous generations of the Apple Watch, uh, and will also carry the same five to six years of software support and updates, giving you lots of longevity for the future. So for $399, the Series 8 is a serious purchase. But at that price, I do think uh, this provides a truly fantastic overall package that you won't find anywhere else, uh, including any other smartwatch companies. Nothing comes close to the Series 8. Now, I think if you're already uh, an experienced Apple Watch user, say on an older model like the Series 3, 4, or maybe even the SE1, uh, and are looking for an upgrade, I think it's gonna be worth spending that extra money uh, and going for the Series 8, not only for those additional health features, but most importantly, for that always on display that I think make this Apple Watch Series 8 the best overall smartwatch that is out right now. And this brings me to the final category, uh, and that is the My Choice category. And that of course goes to the Apple Watch Ultra. Now, if you guys have seen any of my recent videos, uh, you'll have seen this watch on my wrist uh, on most of those videos. And this watch is, well, let's just say it's the biggest uh, and baddest Apple Watch that has ever been made. Uh, and also comes with a price to match, coming in at $799 or 849 pounds. Uh, and yes, that is two Apple Watch Series 8s. So what do you get uh, for this very high price tag? Well, first you get the largest display ever uh, in an Apple Watch. So this has a 49 millimeter Sapphire uh, display that has held up really well. Uh, unlike the other Apple Watches, the SE2 and the Series 8, the Ultra has had zero scratches uh, from my day-to-day -day use. And this to me shows that it can be done. Uh, and I wish Apple had this same quality of display on the other Apple Watches as well, uh, as the way that the Ultra has held up has been excellent. This display also gets super bright uh, at up to 2000 nits of brightness. Now, don't get me wrong, uh, the other Apple Watch models have never been not bright enough, uh, but the uh, Ultra is significantly brighter and you do notice this difference, especially when out in the sun, uh, making the display all the more clear uh, and enjoyable to use. Now, we also get a titanium case uh, and you will only find this on the Apple Watch Ultra. And this is actually surprisingly light considering the size of the watch uh, and is also incredibly durable uh, with no paint chips or any kind of damage uh, to the case of the watch. And a feature that I really enjoy uh, on the Apple Watch Ultra is along with that bigger design, uh, bigger display, you also get a really big battery. So the Apple Watch Ultra will actually last me two to three days uh, of battery life uh, compared to the other Apple Watches, which only last one day. And this is actually really quite nice. This means I charge my watch every other day and on days of travel, I don't have to worry about putting it into low power mode as I know that this Apple Watch uh, will last me all day regardless of how I use it. And then on the side here, uh, you get this customizable orange button, uh, which is a nice touch. I kind of wish Apple implemented this on the other Apple watches itself. Uh, personally, I have this set to activate the flashlight, uh, which is something I find myself using uh, more often than I thought, uh, especially now that I have a dedicated button for it. Uh, this is great if you're looking for say your keys in your bag uh, or just need a quick light uh, very quickly and easy to access right with this button. 
Now the Apple Watch Ultra is really geared towards more extreme sports users. Uh, if you are a mountain climber or a deep water diver, uh, believe it or not, I'm not the biggest fan of those extreme sports. Uh, but even for me, as someone who uses the Ultra as a regular day-to-day -day watch, there are some real advantages that you only get with the Ultra. And again, the first is that larger display. So regardless of how you use your Apple Watch, a larger display just means you see more content at a time and it makes content more easy to read. So for example, things like messages, uh, you can see far more lines on screen at a time, which means you scroll less. Uh, the same thing goes for emails. Uh, whether you're checking maps, you can see street names more clearly using the calculator, uh, stocks, whatever you're doing, everything just becomes bigger uh, and more accessible with this larger screen. And the same goes for that large battery. Now, I don't have to worry about my watch dying whilst being uh, 2,000 meters up high in some mountain, uh, but still, when I'm traveling from day-to-day -day things, uh, it is really great to know that the battery life on my Apple Watch uh, is going to outlast definitely my iPhone, uh, including my 14 Pro Max, which is actually quite impressive. Uh, but it's just one thing that you don't have to worry about, or if, say, I'm ever away for a night, I know I don't have to pack that Apple Watch charger. And then there's the big uh, titanium build. Now, if you guys have seen uh, any of my other Apple Watch videos, you will know that I normally go for the smaller version of the Apple Watch, whether it be the 40 millimeter series uh, SE2 or the 41 millimeter series 8. Now the Ultra, of course, only comes in one size and that is that large 49 millimeter uh, size. And I think for this design, it really works. Uh, this watch has a very utilitarian look uh, and it's really a tool watch. And I think for that, this large design works really well. Uh, and I think the Ultra pulls this off perfectly. But at the end of the day, is this watch worth it? Uh, I think for most, absolutely not. The SE2 offers way better value. Uh, and then the Series 8, of course, gives you many of the features that the Ultra has, uh, including that always on display at a much lower price. So I think those watches will be best for most people. Uh, however, if you are an avid Apple Watch user and want the best of the best, well, there is only one Apple Watch Ultra. Okay, so let me give you uh, a quick recap here. So uh, again, the SE2 offers the best value and at $249, I think this is the perfect uh, first Apple Watch. And then we have the Series 8, which takes all of the features that the SE2 has, uh, adds even more health features, and then crucially, that always on display, making it the best overall smartwatch that you can get right now. And then finally, of course, there is the Apple Watch Ultra. Uh, this watch is not for everyone, but again, if you're looking for that ultimate Apple Watch, uh, one could even say the Ultra Apple Watch, uh, this is absolutely it. And I've really been enjoying this watch, uh, even as a non-extreme uh, sports user, as a regular day-to-day -day user, the larger display, larger battery, uh, and design of the Ultra has been an absolute pleasure to use. So anyway, guys, uh, that gives you my thoughts on the entire Apple Watch lineup for 2023. Uh, let me know if you have any questions at all about any of the Apple Watch models. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.